Hybrids are certainly gaining popularity with more and more people buying hybrids, perhaps hedging their bets, not wanting to go fully electric, but exploring the energy efficient benefits of having an electric motor that they can use at least some of the time, or just having an electric motor that supplements the internal combustion engine's power. There are some things that hybrid drivers need to be aware of. It's very easy to let your engine suffer over the long term by neglecting a few of these essential areas that we're going to flag up. The hybrid engine is very, very complex. The combustion engine is not on all the time. In most cases, the electric power is what you use to start off short journeys, slow speeds up to about 25, 27 miles an hour. Then the combustion engine switches on and kicks in. And in everyday driving, in most situations, the combustion engine comes on and goes off. The electric motor also supplements the power that you need at different times. And each manufacturer has set the criteria for this to happen very, very strictly and with a view to prolonging the life of the engine. But we need to be aware that because the combustion engine is not on all the time, the engine is running cooler, or at least it's running cooler for most of the time. And that really means we can't boot it hard when the engine is cold. We need to have a little bit of warmth in the engine, the metal components, the oil as well, just needs a little bit of warmth to get up to operate temperature before we start driving aggressively. So keeping an eye on the temperature gauge is a really good idea and we only drive aggressively when we get into that ideal temperature zone. Most batteries have an ideal charge window of somewhere between 40 and 80 percent. Letting it charge up too much or discharging it too much can in some cases shorten the life of the hybrid battery. We're not talking about expensive problems like you would get in a full electric vehicle, but it can be quite an expensive problem. And in most cases, you're just shortening the range. So the amount of availability of electrical power will be reduced if we do that. What we want to avoid then is driving very hard and aggressively, utilizing the full power, fully draining the battery, or driving extremely economically, making sure the battery is topped up as much as possible all of the time. You want to keep that charge varying between the 40 and 80 percent. Let me know what your experience has been. I know some batteries are configured slightly differently and they don't mind the longer charge discharge cycles that you experience. But in most cases, it's just a good idea not to overuse or underuse the battery power. Most hybrids have also got an EV mode that you can switch into. So you are predominantly driving on the electric motor, which seems like a good idea. But again, a previous point, we don't want to drain the battery too much. We don't want to be driving exclusively in EV mode. We should have probably bought an EV if that's what we're doing. We want to be using the internal combustion engine, getting it up to temperature and using the car as it was intended as a hybrid, not as a short range electric vehicle. Software updates are probably more important on hybrids than any other type of vehicle. Manufacturers will monitor the fleet that's out there and depending on how the batteries are lasting, the problems that they're getting feedback on will be taken into account with future software updates and they will control in that software update, the way the engine cuts in and way the electric motor supplements the main power. And they will do that with a view to prolonging the reliability long term of the car. So if we miss one of those important software updates, we could be lining up problems for ourselves. Maintenance is essential. A lot of hybrids have additional cooling circuits for the EV or the electric and battery components as well. And we really need to make sure that these cooling systems are working optimally. They do an important job. We don't want those batteries or the motors or any other component to be overheating. And it's just a good idea to keep on top of all the maintenance of our hybrid vehicle. The engine oil formulated for hybrids is very, very specific. It's generally a very limited operating grade. Your conventional combustion engine will have a wider operating range from cold to hot, but because the hybrid engines run cooler most of the time, the preferred margin that the oil has to operate in, in terms of its viscosity, is limited. Some very, very thin oils are recommended by manufacturers on some hybrids. We really do want to use the correct oil. And in some cases, that might not be what the manufacturer specifies. We know a few car makers have come unstuck recently by specifying oil that is too thin. But more important than just the viscosity 
is the overall additive package. And I've done lots of videos that explain in detail the additive packages in vehicles just to help you to be better informed when choosing oil so you know what to look at so you can get something that is appropriate for your car and for its needs to prolong its long term reliability. Most hybrids have a separate 12 volt battery. The motor that drives the car has a much higher voltage. You would expect that is doing a lot more work. The 12 volt battery is controlling all of the other ancillary electrics in the car, which have always been 12 volts. Now that 12 volt battery is generally much smaller in a hybrid because you don't need it. But that does shorten the life. And in a lot of cases, if you leave a hybrid unused for two weeks, the 12 volt battery will completely drain. And that can cause problems with that 12 volt battery's lifespan. We've heard of people needing to replace the 12 volt battery in the hybrid every two years. And in many cases, that could have been avoided just by keeping it topped up by switching the car into ready mode, if you have a car with ready mode, or just by using it frequently and avoiding those short journeys, giving the car a little bit of an opportunity to get some charge back into the 12 volt battery. I've done another video that goes on to that in great detail. So please check that out if that's something that concerns you or a problem that you've maybe experienced already. One danger of hybrid engines, it really is short trips. We've spoken a lot about doing short journeys and short trips and in a hybrid, Sometimes you're more prone to do short trips. That 15 minute drive in your conventional car would have given you just enough time to get enough heat into the engine to burn off all the impurities that the oil had collected, the oil dilution that had taken place. But in your hybrid, the electric motor started off, maybe you've been driving through town at slow speeds, and the internal combustion engine has only kicked in toward the end of that journey, and it's not had time to fully warm up. If that's the situation we're in, we might not be able to avoid doing short journeys, but if that's the case, we should change the oil more frequently. It's the oil that collects all of the impurities. We're talking about moisture from the combustion process and also fuel as well. That can seep into the oil and it collects in the oil. And if that oil never gets up to temperature, the viscosity of the oil is not going to be where the manufacturer wants. And it's going to be too thin and it's not going to give the engine the protection that you actually want. Be aware of your car's transmission as well. In most cases, you've got either a dual clutch transmission in the case of the Volkswagen Group, for example, or a CVT, a continuously variable transmission in the case of Toyota and many other Japanese manufacturers. And just understanding these gearboxes can make a big difference. For example, the Toyota hybrids do not like being in neutral for long periods of time. It's going to put strain on the electrical components because they're always going to be ready to go. And in the case of dual clutch transmissions, we could be putting extra strain on the clutch components if, for example, we were holding the car on a hill using the accelerator rather than using the parking brake and the foot brake as it was intended to be. The fluid in the transmission also needs to be changed. A lot of manufacturers will tell you it's sealed for life. Their idea of life is often five, six years. And if you plan to keep your car longer than that, you really should be changing the transmission fluid. It does degrade. It is subject to heat cycles. And in the case of high performance cars with dual clutch transmissions, that is more important than ever. Even if the manufacturer is saying you shouldn't change your transmission fluid because it's sealed for life, ignore that. You want to keep your car running as long as possible. We need to bear in mind that a lot of hybrids, particularly Toyota and Lexus, are very reliable. And even with driving neglect doing all of the points that I've raised here, it's not going to have much detrimental effect on the overall lifespan of the car. You might be reducing a 300,000 mile capability of the car to 250,000. And in some cases, you may be reducing the reliability. So you may have components that need to be replaced during that car's lifespan that you could have avoided. But it's certainly good just to understand the differences between a hybrid engine and an internal combustion engine that doesn't have all these hybrid ancillary components. And we can adjust our driving style and our habits accordingly and just address some of these areas of risk. Thanks for watching. Please boot the like button if you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments your experience I love hearing how you're getting on with your hybrids, whether you're thinking of getting a hybrid and whether it was what you expected or you've been 
being disappointed by the hybrid that you've got. And please let me know what models you've got so that I can tailor future videos to suit you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've got more great content lined up for you. And I've lined up this video and this playlist for you that you should find really interesting. So see you in this next videos. Thanks for watching.